the, the big pressure moment was Model S had to be great. But each time there's, of course, there's a significant amount of pressure that, that, that comes with that. We don't, we're not a big company. We don't have opportunities to get things not right. Um, and if, we, if they're not perfect, we iterate quickly to make sure to try to get them to perfection or as close as possible. Um, and, you know, we knew that there's, a, there's a, a customer out there that really adored the Model S, just couldn't afford it. You know, I think, and, it, and there were so many elements to the Model S that are great that if we could just make an affordable version of that, um, slightly smaller, so it was a little more nimble, um, right sized, and um, yeah, and it was a, a affordable version of all the goodness that was Model S, then we had a great product. There's a lot of the same sinewy kind of efficiency. Um, one of the things that we we do really well is aero efficiency. It's part of our process. We include the aero kind of component into the early stages of our design because it's just an, it's an important feature to range and it's, um, and then we make it beautiful through its aero efficiency. Whereas I've seen plenty of not so beautiful. But Model Three was really you know we took the the again the the idea of somebody who really aspired to get to a Model S but just couldn't financially. So we wanted to create that product for them as well. So it's, in a way, there's a lot of SQs to it, but um, it's it's still the, the same thing. It's aero efficient. It's very like lean muscle mass kind of idea. The prototype that we unveiled and the production car is surprisingly similar, but the production car is actually more refined and it's better. We did, you know, we, we looked at the nose to try to improve just the overall visual of that. And I think it's better. Um, the, the trunk, we just continued to refine and refine and hone and, and got more usable, bigger opening, more usable interiors. You know, it's changing the, the landscape of automotive interiors right now. And we're seeing that. Um, and it's, you know, I think in a way it's really born out of the idea of autonomy. And when you're in an autonomous vehicle, what do you, what do you, why do you need all this kind of cockpit stuff in front of you? You know, the car's doing the work. You just want to get there safely. How do we, how do we deliver air in a way that just in the same way that we were stripping out buttons and trying to reduce clutter and the, the efficiency of the design, um, how do we deliver air in a, in a really clean, efficient way. And the, you know, we just, we had this idea and we continued to iterate and develop it. And it's, it's pretty awesome. It's such an opportunity. Um, the semi kind of landscape and, and history of semis is not evolved at all. They're kind of, in a way, they're dinosaurs of transportation. And so that's a designer's dream is to like take the, take an idea and really radically improve it and we have such a, a unique we had such a unique opportunity with the powertrain and the way that we could repackage the vehicle um, that we wanted to take full advantage of it and you know we, we talked to a lot of um, truckers we you know we experienced what they experienced and we just saw such uh, an, an amazing opportunity to really make that their whole life so much better safer better um, you know, there's no fumes anymore. There's no vibration. There's autopilot is amazing um, on that vehicle, and this kind of command view of the road. Um, and yeah, just redefining what what uh, a truck could look like. It's a, an amazing machine. Um, that that car is is like no other. And so I think just. It, it showcases the ability of what an electric vehicle can be. It's evolving to, deservedly so. It, it needs more time. Um, and, you know, it will be even better than what we've unveiled and in every way. We looked at a, a spectrum of ideas on what we could make Model Y, but really the, the assignment was how do we make the most financially kind of um, prudent product knowing what the what the capabilities of of that that segment are and so you know the, it, it's another product we had to design it we we had fun doing it um and it's it was challenging in its own right it, and so we spent a lot of time on making sure that the 
the, the functionality of it is great. Um, the, the ergonomics and the seating position of it are great. And it's, and it's a different vehicle than a, than a three. There's, oh, there's going to be a core amount of people that are just, the three is better for them. And the Y will be better for a different group of people. And it will deliver on all the things that they're expecting out of a vehicle in that kind of CUV segment, uh, but more. Um, you know, it has amazing overall range and capability. Um, obviously, all the updates that, that you get, the improvements over time, the, the has a lift gate in the rear, and the potential for a third row seat. And it's a, it's a, you know, in that space, it's a great product. Um, and and it's, it was equally challenged in design in, in its own kind of confine. With every one of our, our projects, we always, we, we work so hard to make the, the, the car that we deliver to the customer better than what we show them. If we didn't do that, then we are really failing at our job. The next one, the next one that we work on is always the most fun. I think, you know, Model S was incredibly fun. X in its own right was u- uniquely fun. There was so much, there's so much in X. It's in a way it's almost over the top. Um, three was, was a really fun product because it was like near and dear to all of our hearts. It was a product that we all wanted. You know, we wanted to be able to afford what we do. Um, Semi was just like carving open a whole new opportunity there. Um, So really fun to get into that. And the the scale of that project is so different than uh, everything else. Roadster, obviously kind of the ultimate vehicle, um, cannot have, not have fun doing that. yeah, why? And it was, you know, a really fun journey that we went on uh, with why. And I think where we are is going to be an amazing product. Um, and yeah, the future that you hear in the back is also <laughs> fun and the ones beyond that too. So that's, it's just a special product. It still is. Like I said, the, the car that we delivered in 2012 is still the best electric car on the road. Um, and the newer ones are just even that much better. I think each of the colors, we take a lot of time to make sure that they're right for the product. And it's hard to say that any of the colors are wrong for any of the products that we have. So, um, but we're always looking at color and seeing if there's a new opportunity. The one that's, you know, really intriguing to me, and I think it's, you know, probably to anybody in the automotive or transportation space is like, how is autonomy gonna gonna shape um, the future of transportation? Like, what is that product when full autonomy is really viable and working really well? Um, what is the, What are the products looking like then? And to me, that's incredibly intriguing. And we've, we have ideas around that. We've been, you know, working on ideas. Um, but that's, to me, there's a fascination around that. So I think it's going to be a, a pretty rapidly changing world in terms of what transportation looks like in the near future.